Dyson unveiled its new circular farm design, featuring rows of strawberry plants which rotate to share sunlight, robots that do everything from harvesting to releasing helpful insects, and sensors to help farmers keep an eye on things. The company is also getting in on the renewable energy game. Find out how it all connects and what it could mean for the future of food as we dig into the details of Dyson's circular farming setup. Inside a 26-acre glass house in the UK, Dyson's circular strawberry farms rotate to ensure that despite being stacked on top of each other, each strawberry plant gets its time in the sun. This also helps the company reduce its use of LED grow lights, which supplement the sunshine. The glass house is temperature controlled to allow the strawberries to be grown out of season. One Dyson engineer, Rob Kyle, said he believed this circular farm was the biggest rig Dyson had ever made, at over 18 feet tall and 78 feet long. Sensors embedded alongside the crops monitor temperature, humidity, CO2, and how much light the plants are receiving so those things can be adjusted as needed. Water is cycled in and out of the system via a series of pipes and drains. Dyson says its circular design results in 2.5 times more yield than greenhouses. Other innovations produced by Dyson Farming include robots that shine a UV light to kill any mold that might start growing on the plants, and a bug distributing robot that releases insects that eat aphids and other things which can wreak havoc on a strawberry harvest. Dyson also has shown off strawberry picking robots, saying that 16 of these robots working together harvested 200,000 strawberries in a single month. But Dyson is growing more than just strawberries. Its website also lists wheat, barley, potatoes, peas, maize, and rye. Dyson says growing different crops helps the soil regenerate its nutrients, and some of the crops can be used to generate renewable energy. These energy crops, as Dyson calls them, are harvested, compressed, and left to rot. But in that rotting, the crops produce gas which can be used to generate electricity. The company says that through this process, its farms are capable of powering the equivalent of 10,000 homes, and that the heat produced during the breakdown is also recycled to help warm the glass house where the strawberries are grown. The broken down crops that remain are returned to the land as fertilizer. Dyson says that 4,000 acres of its 36,000 acres of farmland is dedicated to attracting the right insects to pollinate the crops. Cows and sheep help create natural fertilizer, and other accommodations are made to support the presence of other animals, which add to the biodiversity and improve the health of the land and resulting crops. Overall, Dyson says its innovations aim to help make agriculture more sustainable, food security more reliable, and produce more nutritious and delicious food. If you want to try some for yourself, strawberries from Dyson's Farms are available now in select supermarkets in the UK. And if you're interested in visiting, the company lists multiple places on its website where you can stay on the farm and experience it yourself. For more on vertical farming efforts in the United States, I visited a pesticide-free vertical farm filled with robots in Compton, California a while back. You can check out that video right here. What do you think of vertical farming? Let us know down in the comments, hit that like button if you learned something, and subscribe to CNET for the latest and greatest tech news. Thanks for watching.